obviously hasn't always been vegan and um, I'm not sure, has anybody seen the, the film Game Changers recently? Have yeah. you seen the reviews on that? Yeah, so everybody's talking about it. It's a film that came out recently and it's on Netflix and it just shows people's journey into veganism as elite athletes and it's kind of just breaking down those barriers and stereotypes that to be an athlete you need to eat milk eat meat and drink dairy and all of those things. So um, it's, it's a really promising film and it's kind of hit the mainstream and people are like, whoa. And just an example, we were playing Chelsea here at the drinking camp the other day. I played football, I played for Lewis, I don't know. Um, so Chelsea were here and all of the stars, they got Beth England who placed for England, and Kirby, um, they were all talking about this film Game Changers and potentially going vegan. Um, and so I mentioned to a few of them that we got some vegan options after the drinking pan and um, the pie got the, the thumb of approval. So I feel like the, the conversation is changing and I feel like for us as vegans and athletes it's important to be a part of that and show the general public especially that it's possible because um, when I was a kid I knew like two things, right, that I was certain about. And the first one was that I love animals. <laughs> Um, I grew up on in a rural area in the north of New Zealand, obviously quite a good farm country. Um, we had pigs, cows, chickens, dogs, cats, horses in the store, and I loved every single one of them and didn't really feel as though, you know, speciesism wasn't in my mind. I love my dog as much as I love hanging out with pigs. Um, but I also knew that I wanted to be an athlete. That was another thing I was just set on. I want to go to the Olympics. I want to win a medal. And um, it was always a conflict for me because I was told that if you want to be an athlete, if you want to make it to the top level, you need to be eating meat to be healthy. You need to drink milk for strong bonds. You need eggs for protein. And at that time, I was born in 92. Growing up, there wasn't anybody else that was doing it differently. No, I didn't know any vegetarians, I didn't, certainly didn't know any vegans or what that even was. So I looked around and although I didn't want to be eating these animals that I loved, I thought that I had to. And I didn't know that I had the choice not to. Um, so it was always a challenge for me growing up, uh, especially when my brother was obsessed with eating animals and you know your mum's trying to figure out what to cook so keep the kids happy. Um, so he loved the meat based dish. I loved enchiladas where I couldn't even tell that the chicken was chicken. <laughs> I could never eat anything on a bone. Bacon, no way. But then, you know, you, you just desensitize to something. So looking back now, it, it's crazy to think, like, I despise bacon, but I'd eat a ham sandwich. <laughs> yeah? Like, I couldn't even consider chicken on a bone, but cut it up when I can't tell that it's an animal, then. I'll happily eat it. And that was kind of just something that I got adjusted to. Um, and the uh, moving out of home when I was 17 to pursue football. So um, in New Zealand, I'm from the North Island, and I had to travel quite often two hours to, to play football in a high, at a higher level. And I'd often go after school continuously. Um, and it got to a point where if I wanted to go, I'd in the frame for the New Zealand setup, the under 20s, and there was a World Cup coming up. And the coach said, if you move to Auckland, then you're more likely to be considered because you'll be training more consistently. So I jumped at it, I left um, my last year of school with my friends, left my family, moved down to Auckland to pursue my, my football career. And at that time, I needed to learn how to cook pretty fast, right? Um, and I remember going to the supermarket and having to buy meat. And uh, looking at all the chicken and seeing like the stringy bits and the little white bits and just being kind of disturbed by it. Um, and just having to like cut it up and when it was raw and then I'd cook it and it would change. And then I'd be like, oh, okay, I can eat it now. And it's just so crazy to think about that now. Mints as well, I just, um, as soon as it was cooked, I, I forget that it was an animal, right? But in the process, it was always kind of disturbing to me. Um, so I moved to Auckland to pursue football, and uh, before I knew it, I had broken my foot with a stress fracture. And 
continuously over the next five years, I kept getting injury after injury. So I was pushing myself to perform at a higher level, but my body was breaking down. And like I said, coming from New Zealand, it's a huge dairy industry, right? We are pretty much force fed milk, cheese, ice cream, sour cream, yogurt from a very young age. It's just something that you consume. Um, it's a health food, it's natural, it's normal. Eat the dairy. <laughs> and um, I can say 100% conviction, I was addicted. Like, there was no way I could ever imagine having enough dairy. Nor would I want to. Like, why would I? I, I didn't know any different, right? Um, and so it wasn't until I was about 22 and I just, yeah, I couldn't, I wasn't making the progress that I knew I was capable of because I kept getting these setbacks by injuries. Um, and I got to a point, right, where I've been cooking on my own for a while. I can now chop up a chicken breast. I'm not even worried about it. I got to a point where I'm like, you know what? I'm going to be real tough. I'm going to be so brave now. I'm going to put lamb on a pizza. I'm going to eat lamb for the first time. And I did it, and I was just, just proud of myself for doing that and kind of like getting over that hurdle of uh, And, you know, like, I can eat them on, on yeah, you know, not, not so bad. Um, and it was just a couple of weeks after that, you know, and um, I just finally decided that I couldn't ignore the things that were popping up on social media anymore. You know, you'd see something like factory farming, and I'd be like, nope, no, cows, nope. Like, I don't want to see that. Nope, nope, that doesn't happen to the animals that aren't in Nope, banging it away. And it just got to a point where, like, I couldn't take it anymore. The guilt that I had suppressed from such a young age consuming these animals, it was like just getting too much. And I discovered the documentary Earthlings. And I sat down <laughs> and I watched it from start to finish. And I cried for an hour. Um, it was heart-wrenching just to see in all the ways that we just exploit, abuse unnecessarily these animals. And, uh, it was the biggest wake-up call for me because I realized for the first time at the age of 22, 23, that I had the choice that every dollar that I spend is either like contributing to this or contributing to a better kind of world. So that's the first time that I realized that with every dollar it makes a difference. Um, yeah, and that was huge for me. And it was scary too because again, there weren't many <laughs> in the world that, that I knew anyway. And um, I, I bought into all the stuff that I was told as a kid. I thought that I was going to be completed. I thought that I'll get sick. I didn't know what to eat. <laughs> um, so initially, I, I just made a pact to myself. There's no way that I can continue to buy any products. Like, I, I, no, sorry, meat. I, I no longer would I eat an animal ever. And, um, but then I didn't know what to eat, so I started to eat like five eggs a day because what else do you eat? If you're an athlete, you need your protein, right? And um, then all the stuff cut starts popping up about the egg industry. No, no, I don't know what else to eat if I look into that. Huh? No way. Um, but I, again, the, the, the guilt just kind of got too much, and I was like, no, like, just need a deep breath. It was one of the most courageous things I did, I think, was what, looking at it in the face and seeing the truth and realizing that it's up to me to, to change. And I think credit to you guys if, if you're vegan and you, you've also looked that stuff straight in the face. I think it takes a lot of courage. So if you can, thank you. Um, but also it's, it's a scary thing waking up in this world that you thought was kind of normal and realizing that there's really genuine loving, caring people out there, I thought that, I, like, I was one of those that are contributing to this crazy, destructive um, industry. And uh, that, I think, it is one of the hardest things going vegan. You know, people think, oh, what's the hardest thing to give up? What's, um, what food do you miss the most? And I don't think it's, it's any of that. It's, it's confronting the truth and realizing that it's happening on such a huge scale and the suffering is so intense and the impact that we can have is so minimal when you think about it. Um, 
So fast forward two weeks after cutting out meat and dairy, right? I managed, I, wait, <laughs> cutting out meat and then I looked into the environmental stuff. I watched Cowspiracy and I realized that coming from New Zealand, obviously dairy industry is huge and uh, it's one of our main economic drivers and having traveled around the country as well, I've seen it firsthand. You know, rivers that were beautiful and pristine decades ago are now covered in algae and green sludge and not swimming. Um, native forests, you, you walk into this native forest, right? You can show me the bird song, everything. It's stunning. You walk out and it's just clear. It's just grasslands, it's empty. Now, I used to look at the grasslands, the farmlands, and think, wow, it's so beautiful. But when you spend time in the native forest and you realize that 95% of the country used to be covered in that, it's heartbreaking, right? And a lot of that is just based on agriculture and the nitrogen that they put into it. And you just, it just goes on and on, the effects of it. Um, so I realized that if I want to call myself an environmentalist, if I really do care about the environment, then I can't keep contributing to this either. Um, and that was the decision for me to try and <laughs> cut out cheats. Right? One of the hardest things. I thought, no way. But I said, okay, I'll give myself two weeks. Two weeks without it. After two weeks, right, you know, I told you about my injuries. I used to, on a Sunday after a game, I'd have like a heat pack on my back, I'd have an ice pack on my ankle. On Monday, I'd wake up, I'd be like a zombie getting out of bed. Like, Monday was a bright off. I could do anything. Two weeks. Two weeks. I was leaping out of bed. I had so much energy, I felt like two foot taller. And I'm not gonna lie, I think a lot of that was um, like uh, that release of guilt. I just felt so good knowing that I wasn't contributing to that anymore. But also, my body changed. I was no longer inflamed. I was, I was stronger. I was able to recover so much quicker, which meant I could get in the gym more. I, I, my endurance increased but my clarity of thought as well. And uh, from there, I was just fine. So that was four and a half years ago. After um, five years of trying to pursue, make the national team, become a professional. You can't be a professional footballer in New Zealand. There's just no such thing. I mean, there's one men's team that plays in the Australian league, but as a, as a female, it's just the, the infrastructure's not there. So. Um, yeah, committing to the vegan thing, it took maybe two and a half years before I was feeling like I was reaching my peak and I, I was just getting stronger and getting better. And um, out of, kind of out of the blue, but also a little bit like I was searching for it, um, I got a message from an agent. And I didn't have an agent at the time. I was working full time in um, futsal development. And uh, the message said, Hi Katie, got a really strong club in Europe um, that's interested in you. I was like, this is a, somebody's joking here, right? You don't just get random texts like this. And I'm like, ha ha, yeah, okay, who? Um, Juventus, can you come on trial next month? Next week, pretty much. <laughs> like, can you come on trial next month? I was like, what? <laughs> I called this guy up and uh, it was legit. Um, and so I packed my bags and flew to Italy. And uh, I signed for the first ever Juventus Women's team, which was incredible, incredible. But I tell you, being vegan in Italy <laughs> was not an easy thing, right? Um, so there were heaps of challenges with that, um, but also 50 meters down the road every morning from my house was a full, ve like, full vegetable market, right? Um, so it just kind of helped me eat quite clean because you. You know, there's not all the, the, the changed products and everything like that. Um, so that was a pretty cool thing, but obviously with the, the language and the culture difference, it was really hard to kind of um, engage with people and explain to them why vegan, what, what it is, what it means, and the environment and everything like that. So I struggled in that regard because I could only really have basic level conversations with people and I didn't really feel like understood or anything like that. And on the game day, everybody's getting a big slab of veal, veal thing, didn't be cow, on their plates, and I'm just getting like a plain block of tofu. <laughs> like, 
I'm not really thinking this looked very appealing, but, but um, so that was challenging, but it was a huge learning curve. And football-wise, it was incredible. Um, we got tickets to go watch the men play. So I went from being in New Zealand watching, getting up bright and early, well, actually dark and early, at like 6 a.m. to watch the Champions League and all snug and on the couch to um, being in the stadium watching Juventus play Real Madrid. And that bicycle kick, I don't know if anybody saw it, that Ronaldo scored, it was like directly in front of me. And I'm not going to lie, I cried. <laughs> it was incredible, the whole stadium got up and clapped and like he's in the opposition team. So um, some really incredible moments. And the moment that I signed for Juventus, I also made it into the New Zealand national team. So this is 2017, I got my debut, it was in America, in Cincinnati, in front of 35,000 people, which, uh, yeah, it was an incredible experience. Um, and so from Italy, I came to Bristol, and coming to England, being able to speak to people, <laughs> being able to like express myself, it was made such a difference. And even from New Zealand to here, seeing how big and blossoming veganism is, and the whole concept of it, and the, the options, um, it's crazy. Although, way too much vegan cake. Yeah, like, it's hard, it's hard to walk past it, right? I was in London the other day and the sign, you can go nuts. It's like, well, I went on next to you. It's dangerous, but, but great. And um, I got the opportunity to come on loan here to Lewis, actually. So I, I played for Lewis. I first saw about Lewis FC before um, I left for Juve. So, they have the Equality FC campaign, which they pay men and women equally. The only club in the whole world to do so, right? And um, I saw the video in New Zealand. Whoa, I want to play for that team. Cool, where are they on the on the league? And they were in the third division at the time. And so I thought, oh, probably act a little bit higher. <laughs> I'm not lying. <laughs> um, but I feel like it's all kind of fall in place now, right? Um, having gone to Juventus, got that experience, now playing for the national team, and being able to come here and be a part of something that's really unique and really special. Hopefully not unique for too long, but um, something crazy that I realized quite recently, because Lewis FC is the only club in the world to do this, and there are only a few federations in the world, um, national federations. So Australia recently just said they're gonna do equal pay, with the men and women, all um, income is going to be split equally, which is amazing. So that's what happens here at Lewis as well. Um, and then there's like Norway, Finland, and New Zealand, who also have an equal pay equity deal. Which makes me, currently, the only player in the world to be paid and treated equally by their club and country. Which I think is just kind of sad. In 2019, no other player, men, male or female, can say that. Um, so I'm hoping to change that. <laughs> Lewis FC, I'm hoping to change that. And uh, it kind of, it, that's what I really appreciate about veganism, is that it kind of opened my eyes up to way more, just to my ignorance, really. I, um, you know, I came into it with the, the compassion for animals, I started learning about the environment, I discovered about my white privilege, which I was just blind to. Um, all of these things that are so interrelated and connected. But I think we're at a point now where, um, where the environmental part is such a big part. And uh, yeah, I think um, another, another really big point for me was that um, having access to the internet. You know, I said before that I didn't have any role models or anybody within the vegan community to kind of look up to, but when I did go vegan, I, you know, you can jump on a Facebook group and connect with all these people. You can go on YouTube and look up vegan athletes and be like, oh, they're doing it. And uh, it made me realize that I learned so much from people that I wouldn't have otherwise and that I also have a responsibility to share my story and connect with other people across the world. So I'm quite active on social media. I feel like it's 
I, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's tough, sometimes it's challenging, right? But I feel like I have a responsibility now to um, just to open these conversations up because, you know, a lot of it's so focused on, hey, how do you look today? Hey, what's going on over here? And I just feel like bringing it back to reality, just trying to make those connections with people, help them hopefully, like, lift off their own ignorance and look a bit deeper into, into what's going on and how we can all have an impact in the world, a positive impact on the world it is a pretty cool thing. Yeah. Um, and that's why I'm here today. <laughs> so thank you all for coming in and if you have any questions or any points to raise, I'm happy to discuss. I did a pretty friend in this. I got a call yesterday saying, hey, you want to come in and chat? <laughs> So this is my first uh, official leading talk, so <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.